Yesterday, an extraordinary press conference from the House Oversight Committee led by Chairman Jim Comer detailing what's been found so far in the first 100 days of this Congress, specific to the investigation into the Biden criminal activity, the Biden family criminal activity. One of the members of that committee is Representative Clay Higgins in Louisiana. Also, by the way, you're the chairman on the Subcommittee of Border Security. I certainly want to talk to you about that as well, Congressman, but thanks for joining us tonight. Yes, sir. Glad to be here. Well, first, for the, I, I hate to start with the media coverage, but it's a big part of this story. Only one cable station that I'm aware of covered your press conference live, maybe two. Um, the re Even C-SPAN didn't cover this, and you uncovered incredible details about the Biden family, including nine separate members of the Biden family receiving wire transfers from China. This includes three nieces and granddaughters and sister-in-laws. And I mean, Congressman Higgins, why does there seem to be such disinterest from most people in the media about this? Well, they don't want to cover it because they know that it's it's quite condemning it, uh, for the Bidens. It's, the evidence that we're presenting and you know we're doing the media's job for them right it, it, there was a time in our country when investigative reporting was was real and broad across the spectrum of the political field and and these these modern journalists man they're just not interested in investigating anybody but donald trump right i was going to say that there were a lot of investigators on russian collusion which of exactly. course was not even a real story so yeah, congressman so they're, so they're wrong for that but what we have uncovered is is it's just a beginning it, it's quite right. a deliberate uh process investigating something like this and it's not easy but we are we're forging ahead and and the evidence that we're looking at is of the purest form yes. as an investigator if you can look at bank records bank records are considered essentially one of the most impeachable uh, forms of evidence that you could look at because it, you know, there, there's nothing political about them. They're not Democrat right. bank records or Republican bank records, just uh, numbers right. and, and, yeah. and dates, and times, and names. And there's no, there's no extra uh, interpretation needed here, especially when it That's comes right. to international wire transfers. So we've got nine members of the Biden family receiving wire transfers from China when. President Biden was vice president. Is there any understanding yet from any of the representatives of these individuals in the Biden family about what product or service was provided in exchange for that money? No, they're not answering. We're, we're really not at that point of actually uh, questioning these these people. We will get there. We'll, we, we have subpoena authority. We intend to use it. We're trying to do business with... Uh, with the Biden family and their representatives in a cooperative manner, but they are not cooperative. So the bottom line is that the only product that they had to offer in this entire scheme was was uh, Joe Biden's political influence. His, right. his, so any reasonable man looking at $30 million being directed towards the Biden family and their operatives through a score, a, a couple of dozen shell companies, clearly indicating uh, suspicious money movement. Yeah, thirty million dollars, and exactly one third gets delivered, ultimately through many shell companies, ultimately into Biden family accounts. This, this was, so, yeah, this was the other question I had. I mean, uh, listen, there's a lot of people who conduct business and they set up limited liability corporations. They have a bank account. Um, that That's pretty normal fare. Is there any understanding why uh, the president's brother, James Biden, and his son, Hunter Biden, like I believe this is in the first year that he's the vice president, they set up up to 15 different limited liability corporations all with their own bank accounts and money starts transferring between all of them that that sounds like how a cartel works well that's certainly how money laundering works and and if you were going to sell influence uh to the uh, to our government at the highest level at the, into the white house and you were going to get paid for that millions and millions of dollars from china you would want to launder that money you would want to conceal that money. And if you were going to attempt to conceal the money, you would do exactly what our <laughs> investigators 
has shown that they did, which was which was create a bunch of shell LLCs that have no product and no service to offer. It's just a shell. That's why they call it a shell. Right. And and you you would use people that have done business with the Bidens for a long time that specialize in money and investments and and you would do your best to conceal that money. You'd take the large sums of money that were wired and break it into dozens of payments of smaller amounts. But ultimately, that money ended up one third of it, exactly a one third. That means that the money launderers and it, that was setting up this this is this, this movement, they were getting paid two thirds of the money. You understand? Yeah. So it's clearly beyond the threshold of what we call in law enforcement reasonable suspicion. It, yeah, it's, that's important to understand. It sounds to me like what you're saying is you might not be able to say they're criminals, but you can certainly say that they're acting like criminals. <laughs> they're behaving the way criminals behave. Um, yes, sir. That's the way criminal. That's the way investigations work. Well, you, know, you move forward but through the threshold of reasonable suspicion. You investigate, you harvest evidence, and ultimately you reach the threshold of what's called probable cause. That's that's where arrests get made. It, then you get you have to cross a threshold of guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in order to get um, a successful prosecution and you know a guilty verdict. So we're at the point now of reasonable suspicion is clear, and the media should be recognizing that and admitting that and participating in our investigation. Instead. They, they're trying to push against us. Well, the the media, sure, Congressman Higgins, but what about the Justice Department and the FBI? We know for certain that the FBI now has been investigating Hunter Biden in some form or another since at least 2019. Congressman Higgins, is there any chance that the FBI, full of very experienced and professional law enforcement officers, that they don't know all of the information that you've just delivered to us in this press conference yesterday or in this interview today? They've known this for a while. What's taking so long? Any reasonable man that, that has a, a, a calm, judicious assessment of what we have revealed through our investigation knowing that the FBI had access to this data long before we did as a, a congressional offices and as an oversight committee investigated, any reasonable man would come to the conclusion that the FBI knew about this. Yeah. That means if they knew about it, they were participating in, in, in the, they were participating in hiding it. So at the FBI, I believe DOJ at the highest levels have been uh, corrupted. It, we've we've shown that in their participation in election interference by, uh, you know, prior to the 2020 election, we've shown that that the FBI was very very likely involved. I, I have I have thick files behind me uh, that indicate FBI involvement in in the events leading up to January 6th and even on January 6th. So to think that the FBI was going to help Republican Oversight Committee investigators like me. At this point, is, is sort of, it, uh, I'm not that naive, yeah. but we will have a Republican president, and and therefore we will clean house at DOJ and FBI. So in 2025, you will have a DOJ and an FBI that is able to speak the truth, and they're not suppressed. These fine agents, men and women that are dedicated, you can bet there's hundreds and hundreds of FBI agents right now that are very frustrated with what they're witnessing well, regarding the oppression of the truth out of their, ch their, their senior chain of command. And given that, Congressman, and, and I recognize, yes, it is going to take a new president, a new attorney general, and a new focus on the Justice Department to actually uh, clean house and get things done. But in the meantime, I mean, you're, you're detailing corruption in the FBI and the Justice Department and negligence of their duties and basically violating their oath of office. Uh, I've only got 30 seconds, sadly, but a quick response. Are you calling for a special investigator on this or a special counsel? Uh, or are you calling maybe even for impeachment hearings on Merrick Garland for negligence of his duties? I don't think we'll have time to impeach before he's driven out of office, either by election or, or, or pressure to resign. Uh, but, yeah, we're talking about uh, special investigative authorities. Okay. Are, are called upon here. All yeah. right. Congressman Higgins, there's so much to get to. We didn't even get to the border, but we've got Mark Krikorian with Center for Immigration Studies joining us next. Thank you, Congressman. More to come on O'Connor tonight.